Welcome back to High Stakes. Elevate your game by subscribing to our channel so you never miss our daily content. For exclusive access to our premium betting picks, join our Patreon, find the link in the comments section below. Stay ahead with High Stakes. Cincinnati Reds vs. Pittsburgh Pirates, Paul Skeens has been a standout performer for the Pirates this season. With a 7-2 record, 2.30 ERA, and 121 strikeouts, Skeens has been a great indicator of a Pirates win and the under, which we will get to in a second. The Reds' offensive lineup, though capable of flashes, lacks the firepower to truly intimidate a pitcher. They rank in the bottom half of the league in several key offensive metrics. The Pirates, despite their ups and downs, are still in a position to capitalize on Skeen's power and control. Skeen's is very good, and his presence on the mound gives the Pirates a significant edge. Given the Reds' struggles against top-tier pitching and the Pirates' ability to eke out wins in low-scoring games, this is a game where the Pirates are favored for good reason. Also, you add in the home crowd at PNC Park. My team pick is Pittsburgh Pirates to win. Paul Skeens is apparently really good. The Pittsburgh Pirates phenom was the talk of the league all summer. His dominance was so that he was named the NL starter for the MLB All-Star game after just 11 career starts. During that stretch, Skeens was virtually untouchable, boasting a 6-0 record with a 1.90 ERA. However, the harsh realities of a grueling MLB season have since tempered the rookie's meteoric rise. In the five starts following the All-Star break, Skeens has experienced a notable decline, posting a 1-2 record with a 3.13 ERA a far cry from his earlier brilliance. His strikeout numbers have also taken a hit, with three of those post-break outings seeing him record fewer than seven strikeouts, a rarity in his first 11 starts. Complicating matters for Skeens is the simultaneous rise of San Diego Padres outfielder Jackson Merrill, who has thrust himself into the thick of the Rookie of the Year race with a season that has been nothing short of remarkable. Once neck and neck with the Pirates in the NL wildcard race, the Padres have surged to second place in the NL West, just three games behind the Dodgers, thanks in no small part to Merrill's contributions. The Cincinnati Reds staged a dramatic comeback, overcoming a six-run deficit to defeat the Toronto Blue Jays 11-7 on Wednesday night. Spencer Steer ignited the rally with a two-run home run, while Noel V. Marte and Jonathan India also went deep as the Reds secured the series victory. Ellie De La Cruz was a key contributor, reaching base four times, stealing his majors leading 60th base, and adding his 22nd homer with a solo shot in the eighth inning. Toronto's George Springer hit the 60th leadoff home run of his career, and the Blue Jays added two more homers off right-hander Nick Martinez in the first three innings to build a 6-0 lead. Steers' homer off Blue Jays right-hander Yariel Rodriguez in the fourth, his 19th, sparked the Reds' comeback, which was capped by a five-run fifth inning. India's RBI single chased Rodriguez, and De La Cruz greeted left-hander Brendan Little with a two-run single before scoring on Tyler Stevenson's fielder's choice. Santiago Espinal capped the rally with a bases-loaded walk. Marte and India hit back-to-back -back homers off Eric Swanson in the sixth, while Stevenson added an RBI double. The Reds might be back in the playoff race. My total pick is under 7.5 runs. Los Angeles Angels vs. Toronto Blue Jays, these two teams are currently trending in opposite directions. The Blue Jays' bats have not only picked up in August, but the pitching staff has also come around this month and shown their ability to stymie opponents at the plate. Meanwhile, the Angels' bats have declined further in August and their inability to extend hits has often left runners stranded to close the inning. Look for the Blue Jays to perform well here in front of their home crowd. My team pick is Toronto Moneyline. Toronto has seen the ball well in August, but they still sit among the bottom of the league when it comes to generating runs and hitting homers. Meanwhile, the Angels are bottom 10 in both home runs and doubles per game, which has only put a lid on their offensive capabilities. The Blue Jays pitching staff has been able to turn things around this month and their .215 OBA is a season best. With both offenses inconsistent on the season, it is simply too difficult to trust them to carry positive momentum forward. 
The play is the under 8.5 runs. Philadelphia Phillies vs. Atlanta Braves The Atlanta Braves currently sit in second place in the National League East Division with a record of 67-59. They average 4.32 runs and 8.13 hits per game this season, with a team batting average of .241 and an on-base percentage of .307. This offensive production has led to a plus 52 run differential for the Braves. Opposing teams are averaging 3.90 runs and 8.07 hits per game against the Braves, with a batting average of .241 and an on-base percentage of .307 against them. The Atlanta Braves' performance against the run line this season stands at 56-70. Their record is slightly more favorable on the road, with a 32-34 standing against the run line. However, following a loss, the Braves' record against the run line dips to 27-31. They didn't manage to cover the run line in their most recent game, and, in a more extended view, they've only been successful in covering the run line in six of their past 17 games. The Philadelphia Phillies are currently leading the National League East Division with a 74-52 record. Their offense is a driving force, averaging 4.86 runs and 8.82 hits per game, fueled by a team batting average of .257 and an on-base percentage of .327. This offensive dominance is reflected in their impressive plus-100 run differential. The Phillies pitching staff has also been effective, limiting opponents to an average of 4.06 runs and 8.01 hits per game, with opponents batting .237 and having an on-base percentage of .300 against them. The Philadelphia Phillies have maintained a balanced record against the run line this season at 63-63, showing consistency both at home and away with a 30-30 record on the road. Their performance dips slightly when playing after a win, recording a 34-39 run line record in such situations. Nonetheless, they have shown promising signs recently, having covered the run line in their last game and in four of their last seven games. Despite some fluctuations in their performance, consider the Phillies a solid bet in this series finale against the Braves. My team pick is Philadelphia Phillies minus 1.5 runs. The Philadelphia Phillies have experienced 63 of their 126 games this season finish under the projected total, including 29 of their 60 road games. Following a win, they have recorded 38 unders in 73 scenarios, and their last two games, along with seven of their last 12, have also ended below the projected total. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Braves have seen 73 of their 126 games go under the total, with 28 of their 60 home games following this trend. After losses, the Braves have recorded 32 unders in 58 games, and notably, their last three games and seven of their last nine have also concluded under the posted total. With both teams trending towards lower scoring outcomes, along with the scheduled pitchers potentially favoring the under, Placing a wager on the total points ending under the projection appears to be a sound strategy in this big-time divisional battle. My total pick is under eight runs. Houston Astros versus Baltimore Orioles. The Astros and the Orioles are both gunning for postseason bids this fall. While the Astros lead their division, Baltimore is close behind to the Yankees. In Thursday's game, it is going to come down to offense in a high-scoring game. Houston is starting Spencer Arigetti, who has an ERA of 6.09 ERA on the road. The Orioles' offense is going to get after him early and often. They have hit the most home runs, and they are averaging .259 against American League West teams. Houston has also lost seven of Arigetti's last eight starts. The Orioles will send out Corbin Burns, who will take down the Astros' lineup. He has an ERA of 2.91 at home. The Astros will struggle just like they did against Boston on Wednesday. Take Baltimore Orioles minus 1.5 runs. Baltimore and Houston are where they are because of their offense. The Orioles have hit the most home runs and the Astros have the third best batting average. Both lineups showcase power and a keen ability to reach home plate. This is going to happen often in Thursday's game as both teams are coming off of a long midweek series and the bullpens are sure to be stretched. Take the over 8.5 runs. 
New York Mets vs. San Diego Padres, this is a massive four-game series that'll have plenty of playoff ramifications. With this specific pitching matchup, I think it's worth a shot playing the underdog. Give me the Mets with the plus money payout. Everyone wants to talk about how hot the Padres are right now, but they just got shellacked 11-5 on Wednesday, pushing them to a pedestrian 3-3 in their last six games. Furthermore, while Dylan Cease has been solid, he hasn't been lights out over his last two starts, conceding eight runs, five earned. New York's current roster has put up decent numbers against the right-hander, slashing .259-.355-.519 over 54 at-bats. Runs will likely be at a premium in this game, and I'm confident the Mets can do enough offensively to give themselves a chance to win. Take New York Mets money line. While I think the Mets can score a few runs on Cease, let's make no mistake, the hurler is still a top-tier option. He brings in a 3.46 ERA, 23rd, and 1.02 whip, 10th, while also having the second most strikeouts, 186. At home, his ERA dips to 3.17 and opponents are hitting just .197 against him. Then, let's talk about Luis Severino, who's coming off of a complete game shutout against the Marlins. He dropped his ERA down to 3.91, which is the 41st best in the MLB. As for the head-to-head -head numbers, San Diego's offense is slashing just .157-.189-.373 against him over 51 at-bats. I think we're in for a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel with these two starters towing the rubber. Both have good stuff and can work deep into games, and I ultimately think we'll come in under this total. Take under 7.5 runs.